I'm JB Waterman. It's time to wake up and live. Okay, what if mountains could talk? What would they say if I asked them, Where do you come from? Where do you come from? Where's home? So I asked this question to one of my favorite pieces of the California landscape. The Sierra Nevada Mountains! The Sierras are a beautiful, rugged, granite mountain range in California that stretch for 350 miles. They contain Yosemite National Park, Kings Canyon National Park, Sequoia National Park. They're where John Muir roamed. They are home to the highest peak in the lower 48 states and the largest trees in the world. They are awesome. But why does it exist? What made it? I couldn't just ask the mountains these questions. I had to ask an expert who speaks the mountains' languages. Enter Greg Daring, geologist and mountain communicator. I asked Greg a simple question. What made the Sierra Nevada mountains? And I got a lot of big words and complex geology. There's a lot of heterogeneity. The Farallon plate density contrast is called subduction. Different batches of magma, the asthenosphere, and at the base of the lithosphere, called a batholith. Now I cut past all that scientific talk, and guess what? There is still a lot of mystery around how the Sierras were made. We, you know, we know how the Sierras, we, we know how the rock that constitutes the Sierras formed. There's a lot we don't know regarding the uplift of the Sierras. Sierra, 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 Sierra. So one thing scientists totally understand is how the granite that makes up the Sierras was formed. So back when dinosaurs roamed California, there was a chain of volcanoes standing where the Sierras are today. Now one plate was going underneath another, causing a bunch of bubbling up of molten rock. Underneath these volcanoes, in their bubbling basement, is where the granite of the Sierras was made. This never erupted from a volcano or anything like that. What we see here, this always lay beneath the volcano, essentially in the plumbing system of that volcano. So, walking along the hard rock of the Sierra is actually walking along the core of ancient volcanoes, literally. The rock that makes up the beautiful peaks of the Sierra indeed started out miles and miles below the surface underneath ancient volcanoes. And to a geologist, this is like buried treasure. It's totally buried treasure. Yeah, I mean, who hasn't wondered kind of what was underneath when you see something cool like a mountain range? The Sierras are a mountain range and simultaneously are showing us what's underneath other mountain ranges, like the Andes or like the Cascade Arc. Now comes the mysterious part. How did granite go from being miles below the surface to 14,000 feet above the surface? So, I mean, that's a great question. We have not settled with a single consensus on, on, on what's drive, what did drive and what continues to drive the uplift of the Sierras. How did your rocks form? Why did you get so high? Some scientists believe that the Sierra and granite was pushed up from below, but Greg says that we shouldn't think of the mountains necessarily as being driven up at all. We don't know that the rock that makes up the Sierras was necessarily pushed up because, it, you know, maybe more than being pushed up, which does happen with some mountain belts, like say the Himalayas, whereas in the case of the Sierra Nevada and Western Nor North America, rather than a collision that's pushing up mountains, we may actually have built mountains by the addition of this hot, buoyant material from below up into the crust. When the plates stopped going underneath one another, the volcanoes above the granite dried up and they gradually eroded down to nothing, while the granite itself floated slowly towards the surface and was exposed and gradually eroded into sharp peaks. Pretty cool, huh? Sierra, you're a mystery I know. Some geostuds at Caltech believe that there's an ancient root of the mountain made of incredibly heavy material that has been holding the mountains down. And this root is, is tied to, to why they're so high. Their idea is that the mountains are so much higher in the south because that dense keel has separated, and they use the term delaminated, from the base of the batholith, thereby sort of pulling off, you know, there's no longer a heavy, dense anchor that holds the batholith down in the southern Sierra, allowing the- It to float higher? Exactly. 
These are the questions, Sierra, Sierra. And Greg says there's also evidence that the Sierras look so high because the land to the east has literally collapsed. While those ancient volcanoes were dying, the area of Nevada and Utah were being stretched thin by plate movement. Now, as Nevada got thinner, its land dropped away along the eastern edge of the Sierras, making the sharp, dramatic eastern face of the mountains that you see so clearly from Highway 395. So while the beauty of the Sierras is evident, the reasons behind their height are still shrouded in a fair amount of mystery. And as geologists work to translate the language of the mountains, they also have to work to translate the many languages that exist within the field of geology itself. There's no single language that, you know, geoscientists speak. Um, a person who's taking modern day GPS measurements may speak to a hydrologist who's an expert in river systems and the development of canyons. That person may speak to a seismologist or somebody that studies earthquakes and faulting. And they really don't, you know, they may try to speak the same language, but, but they don't. People come at these problems from so many different ways and no one discipline is going to answer the question about how the mountains formed, right? Do you think there's a Nobel Prize waiting for someone who answers the question? There's no Nobel Prize in geology, unfortunately. <laughs> there should be. So I hope that you will talk to me when I ask you the question. Where did you come from, Sierra, Sierra? Sierra.